Another new game for the channel, and a whole different angle. Welcome to GTFO. I must say that I normally wouldn't touch a game that is anything even towards horror or particularly even stealth categories. But after seeing a small amount of footage of GTFO, I was intrigued. Was it going to be a bit like a creepy World War Z or maybe a little bit left for dead? Well, the truth is not really. It's something different and it's something pretty unique. This is a game about coordination and working as a team. Communication is pivotal. The idea of playing this with a bunch of random people in a match-made lobby does not sound like a good time at all. The gameplay of the Alpha was essentially an avoid em up with set objectives for the mission. You need to locate a particular item which is hidden somewhere in the map, but to get there you need to know where it is. So using a command line computer terminal, and yes you have to actually type out the text into the terminal, surprisingly enjoyable to do, and you can query the location of objects if you know their name. On the way to your objectives, you're going to meet some of the residents of this unknown industrial area. Take care, there are monsters in the shadows. Your first time playing is a learning curve like any other game. You spawn in with some weapons you selected beforehand, so why not use them on the monsters you see in that first room, right? Of course. Well, this is a game also about resources. Ammo, tools, and especially health are in short supply. The monsters themselves are rudimentary beasts. They are often asleep or unaware, and you'll spend a significant amount of energy trying to keep them that way. Most are sleeping, and will only wake if you get too close, happen to use your flashlight on them, or, most dangerously, move while they are making their heartbeat sound. Once they are alerted, they also alert nearby monsters, and your world will change from slow and steady creeping to panic running almost in an instant. You need to kill them, and quickly. It's easy to become overwhelmed. These guys do a lot of damage. This punishment for lack of coordination or stealth never sort of feels contrived though. It's not like some nonsense mechanic, it feels true to the world. In fact, there's a real sense of enjoyment and achievement from clearing areas properly. And just a quick aside to say, if you are enjoying this video, please do tap the thumb up button. It helps me out tremendously with YouTube and all that kind of jazz. So if you choose to do that, then thanks, it really is appreciated. The environment is interesting in an abandoned, industrial complex sort of way, but the single map in the alpha doesn't show much variation on that theme. In fact, you can imagine that the actual set dressing of the rooms isn't that detailed compared to other modern titles, yet the game's use of very dark areas, and I'll say that's for legitimate gameplay reasons, in conjunction with some nicely thought out contrasty lighting, helps to create a real sense of atmosphere and place, but also doing its relative lack of details and favours. The style is interesting too, there's an almost old technology feel to the world. The main game interface is slightly ghosted like an old CRT monitor that's been left on too long. The edges of the screen warp and glitch like equipment that's seen better days. It's all nicely judged and plays into a sort of creeping sense of not quite knowing where this world is set. This was very much an alpha build of the game, a single map, like I said. A bunch of bugs, though none actually that game-breaking, and some performance that I would guess was somewhere between medium to bad. It's pretty alpha though, and indeed they have an optimization pass scheduled for during their beta. What's most important is that the core gameplay feels compelling and enjoyable. The addition of tools to help you deal with the inevitable waves of monsters that are drawn to you at times during the map really helps with the depth of the game. The biometer is like the motion sensor from Aliens, allowing you to see through walls and locate those threats places requirements on the people playing to describe what they're seeing to their other teammates so that some sort of plan can be sort of formulated. This is actually really great co-op, it's giving information to one team member then creating a need for them to accurately describe it to others, it's a really nice design. There are sentry turrets that prove invaluable for dealing with those waves of enemies, but do take care to be standing on the non-dangerous side when they start firing, it can give you that advice firsthand. Glue guns as well can be used to slow down monsters or help reinforce doors, allowing you time to complete some of the more mechanic-heavy unlock procedures that some of the doors in the game need you to perform. All in all, it's not the jump scare game that I thought it would be. It's something, although fueled by tension, is much deeper, and even at this alpha stage, delivers more to non-horror fans than I guessed it would. Like I said though, it's not all there yet. There are some core things that I would say would need looking at. Top of that list for me is weapon handling. There's a clumsiness or an awkwardness to them at the moment. Many also lack a sense of weight that they really need, especially as these are frequently used in high tension situations. They need to feel like a powerful last resort, and at the moment, many don't give you that feedback at all. There's some bad ADS setup there too, but that's probably more on the it's alpha side. But if you break ADS toggle by sprinting or some other action, 
you really don't want it to snap back into ADS when you stop moving. It's rather irritating, and given the situation when you are using weapons, it's pretty panic-inducing too. There are a lot of unknowns about GTFO. There's a roadmap on their site, and of course link that in the description, but it's not an exhaustive list. Wanting an exact release date at this point feels pretty premature, but as far as I know, we don't even have a rough time frame that the devs are looking at. Perhaps even more important is of course price. The devs have said that GTFO will cost less than $59.99, which I guess is reassuring in a way. I don't know how much content will be in the final game, how many maps it'll ship with, how many weapons, what sort of unlocks there'll be, but given that they've said that they're a development team of fewer than 10 people, they wouldn't expect thousands of cosmetic unlocks. They have said though that we are committed to not having any microtransactions in GTFO and the continuous updates to the game will be completely free. However, we do need to put food on the table, so if planned business models do not work out as planned, we may add some cosmetic support the devs type DLC. We promise though that there will never be any pay to win or shady loot box type microtransactions in GTFO, which is all certainly nice to hear. I think that given the hardcore co-op focus of the game that pricing will make or break this title, it's not selling to one person at a time on this game, it's selling to that person and all their friends at once. Playing this game with people that I don't know sounds like a stressy nightmare of a time. It needs people that you already communicate with to be the foundation that it then rests on. That they don't want it to be an almost $60 game is good, but I'm not sure that I, at least at the moment, see this even as a $40 game, though perhaps with more content and more information about what's happening further down the line, I change my mind on that. What's more, I think that bundling keys together so that people who are already sold on this concept can get their friends in with no additional road humps, that'd be a really good idea. I do really hope that there was a viable pricing model for this game though, as I had much more fun with it than I thought I was ever going to. It brings something different to the table, the gameplay isn't something I've ever experienced before, and if I'm honest, I never would unless my friends had been interested and if it wasn't co-op. It's one of those titles that you're glad you tried, even though it's outside the normal wheelhouse of your enjoyment. It makes you wonder about what other titles you might have missed while your view was being blinkered by your assumptions. But I would worry though, I don't see me uploading let's plays of Amnesia or Five Nights at Freddy's quite yet. GTFO is in alpha, but I'll certainly be keeping an eye on this one as it progresses through testing, gets more content, and makes its way to final release. I'm of course very interested in what you think of GTFO. Have you heard of it before? Have you even tried it? Let me know what you think by leaving a comment below right now. I'll of course be reading every single one of them. If you enjoyed the video, please tap the thumb up button and consider nudging the subscribe and the notification bells too. That way you'll know when the next video is ready in your sub feed. Thank you so much for watching. If you share this video on Twitter or on Reddit or wherever, then an extra special thank you to you lovely folk for all the support. It really is appreciated. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Take care.